the beginning. Local councils are also seeing their budgets reduced. Just today, Bristol announced 323 jobs would have to go. Birmingham Council have to save £600 million by 2017. The one show were there when the leader of the council asked to hear opinions at a very heated public meeting. Birmingham City Council is the largest in Britain, and like all councils across England, it's having to make cuts. Sir Albert Bohr is its leader. Today, he's delivering some bad news to the residents of his city. I've come to meet Sir Albert as he prepares to tell the people of Birmingham the extent of the cuts that he says he's going to have to make, and as that could include potential job losses and cuts to vital services, it could be a potentially explosive conversation. Birmingham claims it's being hit harder than others. The council says nationally the cuts amount to £74 a head. Here in Birmingham, it's double that at £149. That's down to the city's reliance on central government grants to run local services. Today, Sir Albert's explaining what services are under threat. How does that make you feel as a politician, having to go and make those announcements upstairs? I'm assuming this is not the reason you wanted to become a politician. Oh, absolutely not. I certainly didn't come into politics to cut services. I came in to try and provide services to local people. Uh, but we're in uh, an austerity period where government are dictating that local government budgets will have to decrease. Certain spending, such as education, is ring-fenced by law, so any cuts will have to come from elsewhere in the council's budget. This means slashing spending on street cleaning, hanging baskets and grass cutting, but also services for children and vulnerable adults. Things like school transport, children's centres and breaks for disabled children. The residents here are furious. I truly do believe, right, if these cuts go ahead, there will be riots again in Birmingham. Yep. The people of Birmingham didn't create the deficit and the people of Birmingham shouldn't have to pay for it. There may well be the consequences that some of you have spoken about on the streets of Birmingham. I hope it doesn't come to that, but the government needs to understand that the level of cuts they're imposing on local government is giving rise to these feelings. The authorities are smashing up public services and forcing through these cuts. The people did vote for Labour to implement them. They voted for Labour to fight them. And that's what we want to see. I'm proud to be a Brummie, but I'm ashamed to say, what are we leaving our kids? Not a lot. Let's nail it now. There is an alternative. Show some political courage and stand up and lead a fight. Well, it was a very angry meeting and there were lots of very personal attacks on Sir Albert himself, all asking him to put his career on the line to save Birmingham. Some at the meeting want Sir Albert to run what's known as a deficit budget, maintaining council spending on services despite not having the money to pay for them. This has happened before, most famously in Clay Cross in Derbyshire in the 70s and Liverpool in the 80s. These councils simply refused to implement the cuts demanded from central government. There were several questions tonight about whether you're prepared to put your political career on the line for Birmingham by putting in a deficit budget. How do you feel when you hear people asking you to make that choice? Is it you or Birmingham? No, that isn't the choice. Um, I have a monitoring officer who has to sign off the budget put to the city council. I know that monitoring officer will not sign off the budget because a deficit budget is an illegal budget. It would end up with the government stepping in and forcing a budget on Birmingham City Council. Now, I think in the circumstances, that budget will be even more draconian uh, than what it is I'm attempting to put in place. The following morning, I catch up with Sir Albert. Although the council has already made efficiencies, they must save a total of £600 million by 2017. An increase in council tax is on the cards and 900 council jobs are on the line. All this in a city that's one of the most deprived in the country. I'm not saying that Birmingham shouldn't take its fair share of the cuts and the word, the appropriate word in there is fair. We have been subject to cuts greater than the national average, yet we are a very deprived city. We've got uh, high unemployment levels, we've got high levels of inequality on health, on housing, on education, and these are the things that a big city has to deal with. 
The government says that the settlement is fair and that Birmingham's spending power is only reduced by 1.1%, meaning it can protect frontline services. It also says that Birmingham has benefited from major government investment, including a £1.5 billion city deal. The council's final budget decision will be announced in March. Only then will the people of Birmingham find out if they've influenced the outcome. Well, we're going to be following Sir Albert Bohr and Birmingham City Council in the coming months to see the effect of those cuts. Now, Rory, at a